Hello all. Welcome to Concept E classes. In the series of lectures, we will be completing the entire syllabus of class 8 science. In this video, we will be covering chapter 1 which is crop production and management. We are covering this chapter in two videos. In the first video, we will cover the entire topics of chapter 1 based on NCRT science textbook and in the next video, we shall deal with the questions and answers of the exercises in chapter 1. So let's start. So why should we study this chapter crop production and management? The questions that pop in our mind is what is a crop? Why do we need crops? And what do you mean by crop production and management? The answer is simple. We need food such as rice, maize and paddy. And where do we get all this food from? We get it through the process called as agriculture. Agriculture is a process of cultivating land and produce rice, wheat and other food crops. Through agriculture, we could produce a large amount of food and for that we require proper management and distribution. So in this entire chapter, we will be studying about these agriculture practices. Okay. What is a crop? When plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place on a large scale, they are called as crops. When I say of the same kind, it can be either rice is cultivated on the same field or sometimes wheat in this field. So it should be the same kind. Such type of plants are called as crops. Crops can be of different types. Not only rice or wheat are called as crops. Even fruits when they are cultivated in a large scale, they are called as fruit crops and vegetable crops when vegetables are grown in a large scale. Okay? So crops can be classified based on the season into two. One is carif crops, and the other is rabi crops. Carif crops are the crops that are grown in rainy seasons, that is from the month of June to September. And rabi crops are the crops grown in winter season, that is from October to March. The examples of carif crops are paddy, which is rice, maize, you know, corn, soya bean, groundnut. These are the crops that grow in rainy season. And the example of rabi crops are wheat, gram, peas, and mustards. These are the crops that are grown in winter season. And besides this, pulses. You know what are pulses? Pulses are lentils, that is dals, like tuar, maizhul dal, and vegetables are usually grown in summer. Next, we'll see the basic practices of crop production. This is a very important part of the chapter. In agriculture, that is a cultivation of crops, certain activities are done by farmers over a period of time. And these agricultural practices are, first one is preparation of soil. That is, we turn and loosen the soil. The second is sowing. That is, we plant the seeds. Third is adding manure and fertilizers to replenish the soil. Fourth is irrigation where we water all the crops. Fifth one is protection from weeds. Weeds are those undecided plants that are grown along with our crops. Six is harvesting and seven point is storage. Now we will discuss each of these practices in detail in the coming slides. So the first agriculture practice is the preparation of soil. The three questions that come to our mind is what do you mean by preparation of soil? Why do we need to prepare the soil? And how can be done? So let's see. What do you mean by preparation of soil? Preparation of soil means turning and loosening the soil. Why do we need to do this? That is, since only a few centimeters of top soil supports a plant growth, turning and loosening the soil brings the nutrient-rich soil to the top and so the plants can use it. That is, the soil, it contains minerals, water, air and some living organisms along with the nutrients of the dead organisms. That is, the dead plants and animals are decomposed by soil organisms and the nutrients in that organisms are released back to the soil. So, when we turn and loosen the soil, these nutrient with soil is brought back to the top and the plants can use it. The loosened soil also helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes. 
earthworms and microbes are called as a friends of farmers and they in turn help in turning and loosening the soil by loosening the soil the roots can penetrate deep into the soil making them to breathe easily and they could exchange gases as well this process of turning or loosening the soil is called as ploughing or tilling ploughing or tilling is a process of turning or loosening the soil and this is done by a plough which is made of wood we'll discuss this plough in the next slides so this is a process of ploughing see this is how we turn and loosen the soil with the help of plough but if the field is dry watering is required before ploughing and the ploughed field may have big clumps of soil called as crumbs see these all clumps of soil these are the crumbs and it is required to break those crumbs and for that we have this thing called as leveler it's connected to a tractor and the process is called as leveling and with this leveler we could break all this crumbs and we also add manure to the soil before tilling because it helps in the proper mixing of the soil therefore before ploughing we add manure to the soil and then we loosen the soil so how is ploughing done or how can we loosen and turn the soil it can be done by using these tools the first one is a plough a hoe and a cultivator the plough is an ancient tool used for tilling the soil adding fertilizers removing weeds and turning the soil it is made of wood and it is drawn by a pair of bulls it contains a strong triangular iron strip called as plough share and the main part is a long log of wood which is called as a plough shaft and there is a handle at one end of the shaft and the other end is attached to a beam which is placed on the bull's neck but nowadays these wooden plough have been replaced with iron ploughs the second one is hoe this tool is also used for loosening the soil and it's also used for removing weeds it has a long wood or iron called as a beam and a strong bent plate of iron which is fixed to one of its end and it works like a blade see like this it is also pulled by animals the third one is cultivator nowadays we use cultivator for ploughing it is attached to a tractor and it contains a frames with teeth and it's dragged along in linear line see this is how a cultivator works and nowadays the ploughing is done using a cultivator so the second agriculture practice is sowing what do you mean by sowing we are planting the seeds before sowing we should select good quality seeds clean and healthy seeds and good variety seeds so if we select such seeds we will get a high yield of crops now let's see the tools which are used for sowing the first tool is a traditional tool the traditional tool used is shaped like a funnel see in this picture we could see a funnel the seeds are filled into this funnel the funnel is passed down through two or three pipes here we have only one pipe but it can also be two or three pipes and it has sharp ends and when these ends pierce into the soil they place the seeds there this is a traditional tool the second important tool used in sowing is a seed drill Nowadays we use seed drill for sowing with the help of tractors. This is a real time implementation of a seed drill. We have a tractor here and this is a seed drill. The seed drill sows seeds uniformly at equal distance and depth. See, equal distance and depth thereby avoiding the overcrowding of plants. And it ensures that the seed gets covered as well so that it protects the seeds from being eaten by birds. it saves both time as well as labor the third agriculture practice is adding manures and fertilizers due to the continuous cultivation of crops the soil gets impoverished what do you mean by impoverished the soil would be poor in nutrients thus the farmers have to add substances in the form of nutrients to the soil these substances are called as manures and fertilizers and these replenish the nutrients of the soil this process is called as manuring manuring is a process of adding manures and fertilizers to the soil 
and insufficient and improper manuring results in weak plants. Now let's see the three questions. What is manure? How is it formed? And why do we need to use manure? So what is manure? An organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plant and animal waste is called as a manure. Now how is it formed? The farmers dump plant and animal waste into the pits which are then decomposed by microorganisms such as earthworms or microbes and this decomposed matter forms organic manure. Now why do we need to use manure? The manure helps in retaining water level. It holds the water capacity of the soil. It makes the soil porous and improves soil texture. It helps the roots to breathe easily and exchange gases. It increases the number of friendly microbes. That is, it increases the growth of earthworms which helps in loosening and turning the soil. Now what are fertilizers? The fertilizers are the chemicals which are rich in a particular nutrient. How is it produced? These are produced in factories. Some of the examples of fertilizers are urea, ammonium sulfate, superphosphate, potash, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, that is NPK. Now, we know the use of fertilizers. There are both advantages as well as disadvantages. The advantages is that it helps the farmer in better yield of crop such as wheat, mad, paddy and maize. Whereas the disadvantage is that because of this chemical, the soil becomes less fertile and it is a major source of water pollution. So because of this disadvantage, what can be done? We could substitute fertilizers with organic manure. With the help of manure, it helps to replenish the soil. And the second is that we could leave the field uncultivated in between crops. Or we could apply the process of crop rotation. That is, growing different crops alternatively. For example, if in one season we grow legumes as a fodder, and in the next season, if we grow wheat, we could find that the soil would be rich in nutrients. Therefore, crop rotation is also a very important method for substituting fertilizers. So let's see the difference between fertilizers and manures. The fertilizers are man-made, whereas manures are natural substance. The fertilizers are prepared in factories, manures are prepared in fields. The fertilizers doesn't provide any humus to the soil, whereas manures provide a lot of humus to the soil. The fertilizers are rich in nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. But manures as compared to fertilizers are less rich in nutrients. So we saw the first agricultural practice was the preparation of the soil, the second was sowing, the third was adding manures and fertilizers and now the fourth one is irrigation. What do you mean by irrigation? Irrigation is a supply of water to crops at regular intervals. The supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called as irrigation. The time and frequency of irrigation it varies from crop to crop. That is the water required for wheat might not be same as compared to rice. It may vary from soil to soil and also from season to season. That is why the carib crops require less water as compared to rabbit crops. Now the sources of irrigation are well, tube wells, ponds, lakes, river, dams and canals. Now why is irrigation required? Germination of seeds doesn't take place under dry conditions. It has to be watered properly. Nutrients dissolved in the water are transported to each part of the plant. It protects crop from both cold as well as hot air currents. And to maintain the moisture of the soil, we require irrigation. Now, how is irrigation done? For that, we have two types of method. One is traditional methods and the other is modern methods. I'll give you a brief description about these traditional methods, but if you need a detailed lecture, message me in the comment section and I'll give you a full description about each methods. The water available in the well, lakes, rivers are lifted up by these methods and are taken to field by capital or human labor. So these are cheaper but is very less efficient and also results in water wastage. Now the first method is moat or pulley system. Here, the water is lifted directly from the well with the help of a pulley and it's poured into this channel 
which act as an artificial stream and it provides water to the rest of the field. The second one is a chain pump. It consists of two large wheels connected with an endless chain of buckets. One wheel is immersed, half immersed inside the source and as this wheel rotates, the water gets filled inside the bucket and as it reaches the top, it pours into this channel which acts as an artificial steam. The next is Dekli. In Dekli, we have a bucket and a rope which is connected to a large pole and the other end of the pole is connected to a heavy stone. When we lift this up, we could get directly water from the well. And the fourth method is Rahat or lever system. Here, the water is directly taken from this well with the help of animals. It has two wheels. The animal is collected like a bull is connected to a wheel. And when the wheel is moved by this animal, the water is directly drawn from this source. See, this wheel is immersed inside this source. And when this bull moves in a circular motion, the wheel also moves and it takes water from this well and it pours down into this channel. Now, pumps are commonly used for lifting water. These pumps can run with the help of diesel, biogas, electricity and solar energy. Next is the modern methods of irrigation. The first method is the sprinkler system that is more useful in uneven land where there is insufficient water. It have perpendicular pipes. See, you can see perpendicular pipes and rotating nozzles on the top. This is a nozzle and it is joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals. See, it has perpendicular pipes with rotating nozzles and they are connected to the main pipeline at regular intervals. And when the pressure from the main pipe is produced with the help of a pump, the water escapes through these nozzles. It provides an effect of raining and it's mainly used for lawns, coffee plantations. The second is a drip system. The water falls drop by drop directly near the roots. It's a best technique for watering fruit plants and water is not wasted at all. Now the fifth agriculture practice is protection from weeds. What are weeds? The undesirable plants. The undesirable plants that may grow naturally along with the crops are called as weeds. And the process of removing these weeds is called as weeding. Weeding is a process of removing these undesirable plants. Why do we need to protect plants from weed? It competes with crop plants for water, nutrients, space and light. It affects the growth of the crop. It may even interfere in harvesting which may be poisonous to humans as well as animals. Therefore, it is required to do weeding. So how is weeding done? Tilling before sowing of crops help in uprooting and killing of weeds. Tilling means ploughing with the help of a plough or a cultivator, we could uproot or kill the weeds. We could do weeding manually with the help of kurpi as well. This is a kurpi. We could either uproot or cut them close to the ground. And we could also use a seed drill to uproot the weeds. What is a seed drill? I hope you remember. It is a machine which is connected to a tractor which has a frame of teeth which is dragged along in linear motion. So weed can also be controlled by using certain chemicals called as weedicides like 2 or 4D. They are sprayed in the field with the help of a sprayer but this may affect the help of farmers. Now the sixth agriculture practice is harvesting. What is harvesting? The cutting of crops after it matures is called as harvesting. The crops take about three to four months to mature and we either cut the crops close to the ground or pull it out. So that process is called as harvesting. We can do it manually with the help of a sickle or by a machine called as harvester. Then in the harvested crop, the grain seeds needs to be separated from the chaff. And this process is called as a threshing and it is done by a machine called as combine. This is a combine. See, it has a both harvester and as well as a thresher. It harvests the crops and then it separates the grain seeds from the chaff. 
farmers with small land do threshing with the help of winnowing now the seventh and the last agriculture practice is storage now why do we need to store this harvested grains to keep the harvested grains from moisture insects rats and microorganisms we have to store it properly as a grain contains moisture they should be dried before storing so that we could prevent the attack of insects pest bacteria and fungi now how do we store these grains the farmers store these grains in jute bags or metallic bins and for large scale storage of grains it is done in silos this is a silo or granaries where large amount of jute bags are placed in like a stock inside a big store that are called as granaries and at home if you find uh, food grains and if you want to store it properly you could put some dried neem leaves as well animal husbandry like plants animals also provide us different types of food like milk eggs meat wool fish etc so like crop production and management animals which are reared at home or in farm should be provided with proper food shelter and care when this is done in a large scale it is called as animal husbandry that is animal husbandry is a process of taking care of animals that are reared at home by giving them proper food and shelter and care so coming to the end of this video let's take a quick recap of what all we studied in this video the first one was agriculture agriculture was a process of cultivating land and producing crops like rice wheat and maize now what were crops and there were two types of crops cardiff crops and rabi crops the cardiff crops grew in rainy season and the rabi crops grew in winter season then we studied of the basic practices of agriculture the first one is preparation of soil where we turned and loosened the soil with the help of tools such as a plough a hoe and a cultivator then we saw the sowing where we plant the seeds with the help of a funnel or by a seed drill then we studied about manures and fertilizers what are manures what are fertilizers their differences advantages and disadvantages of using these then irrigation two methods were there a traditional method which had a moat pulley system dekli rahat a lever system and the modern methods included a sprinkler and drip system and then we saw the protection from weeds why do we need to protect our crops from weeds and the weed the sides and about how we could manually uh, do weeding with the help of a kurpi and all then harvesting that is how we cut our crops close to the ground or uprooting the uh, matured crops with the help of a harvester and a combine and finally it was storage how we could store the grains with the help of jute bags or in large silos then we saw a brief introduction about animal husbandry as well just as crop production we should take care of the animals as well which provide food to us so this was end of our video so for detailed notes mail me on conceptecloud@gmail.com or drop your email id in the comment section the next session would be uh, the question and answers of the exercises in chapter 1 and please share like and subscribe if you find the contents useful thank you so much may god bless you all take care bye bye